In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, what a joy it is to be here. Thank you for joining us for this online service of Holy Eucharist from the Parish Church of Rushmere St. Andrew. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Right at the very beginning of this service, would you join me in prayer? God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, Remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us that our thankfulness may grow. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. What a joy it was on Sunday to welcome back some members of the choir to sing in church for the first time since March. After the service, I asked Alan and Shirley how it was for them. But first, we praise the holiest in the heights. How are you? Fine, thank you. It's lovely to see you. And the choir sang this morning and uh, was really beautiful. How was it for you? It was wonderful. It's nice to see Alan and um, the rest of us. There eight of us all together. Normally we're 13, but I think we made a good sound. You made a very good sound. Oh, yeah. It was glorious, yes. Lovely to be there. It feels like a really positive thing, doesn't it? Well, long lovely to, may it last. Long may it last. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Sue. How are you? Really, really good, thank you. This morning, the choir sang for the first time. Yeah. What, how positive is that? Really positive, yeah. As soon as I heard that the restrictions had been relaxed, I thought we'd go for it. And it yeah. seemed to work very well. I think so, yeah. And, and the music making was beautiful. Thank good. you. Good. I'll pass that on to the choir. To prepare our hearts and minds to worship, together we say, Almighty Mighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We take a moment to gather our thoughts, remembering all that Jesus has done for us. And we call to mind those times we have failed him. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you and against our neighbour in thought, thought and, and word and, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through, through our, our own deliberate fault. faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. gather together our thoughts, prayers and those we bring with us in our hearts. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. 
and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This morning, we are challenged to take up our cross and follow Christ. Thank you, Diane and Ruth, for sharing scripture with us, and Chris for opening the scriptures for us this morning. I'm sorry about the background noise, but on a rare sunny morning this week, I couldn't resist filming outside. Oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I do not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing? my wound incurable, refusing to be healed. Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious, and not what is worthless, you shall serve me as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it. Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How are you feeling today? What does your life actually feel like after this time of lockdown? And how do you feel about the gradual relaxation of the rules? During the summer, we have become accustomed to living a much quieter, and simpler life. Our social interaction with other people has been very restricted, which for some people has brought a greater peacefulness and for others loneliness and depression. As we gradually return to normal living, how can we retain the best qualities of life whilst returning to the hurly-burly of life as we knew it. Governments love to talk about happiness as if they ever influence it, yet the last six months have shown us how much 
grassroots activity matters and how, particularly during the past two or three weeks, how government from the top messes up. Well, a minor disaster occurred in our household a month ago when I found that the heat had caused one of the strings on my ukulele to snap, necessitating the purchase of another set. And this had to be fitted and had to be tuned. Now some of you who lived through the 70s will remember a book called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Persick, which was not really about motorcycle maintenance at all, but rather on how to live a contented life. So I've entitled this homily this morning, Christianity and the Art of Ukulele Tuning. But this talk is not about tuning my ukulele, but more about how the tuning process brings about a harmonious existence. What do I mean? Well, if my ukulele is out of tune, it makes an unpleasant sound. It may, may be mildly out of tune, which causes a sort of ring within the chord I'm playing, or badly out of tune when the chords don't sound at all. And when one fits new strings, they take a while to settle down and they need retuning almost daily, especially in warm weather. When the lockdown started, it was as if all the strings that hold our communities together had snapped. We were largely on our own and our conversations were no longer face to face, but largely by telephone or over the internet. Physical contact was out. And even now, we cannot shake hands at the peace. So, as the rules are relaxed, now we may begin to restring and to retune. Maybe we felt we needed to do that anyway. Perhaps we were overcommitted, or just too busy, or perhaps we had unresolved issues with friends or relatives and felt our lives needed a proper reordering. Now to tune my ukulele, I use a little electronic gadget and it glows green when the string is perfectly in tune. What can we use to retune our lives? Well, the bookshops are full of books which claim to help you to do this. Lose weight, become more mindful, obtain success. You and I have a rather larger living book called the Bible, which can provide us with instructions. And St Paul spent his ministry building up little communities of Christians throughout Asia Minor and his Mediterranean world. And he knew that those communities would find living out the Christian message difficult and from time to time would lose focus and direction. Today, he provides us with a tuning instrument for life. This is rather more than tuning my four-string ukulele though, it is more like tuning a 12-string guitar. Now I dare say some of you may have samplers worked by your Victorian forebears and it struck me that the passage we heard from Romans this morning would make a wonderful sampler to frame, to read every day. I just want to read a few of these phrases. Let love be without dissimulation. Be kindly affectioned towards one another. 
not slothful in business, rejoicing in hope, distributing to the necessity of the saints, rejoicing with those who rejoice. I could go on. There's so much more in that little passage we heard this morning. And do, when you get home, open your Bible and read that passage slowly. Romans 12, 9 to 21. Letting each phrase sink in and work for you. Each of them is like a string on an instrument. And we will find that some we keep firmly in tune, and others, through the ups and downs of life, they slip and they go out of tune. And that's when we find ourselves sort of out of sorts. That's when we find we are out of sorts with people, or sometimes even those really close to us, just as Peter did this morning with a chance remark and Jeremiah before him too. I'm pretty sure that we might never on our own be able to tune all those strings perfectly, nor that if we did, that they would remain in tune. Paul's life had been turned around by meeting Christ on the Damascus Road, and thereafter in his life he demonstrates that he took the words of Jesus seriously. He denied himself. He took up his cross and he followed Jesus. And when we start to do that, then we too will find that the strings of our life will begin to be tuned. We will know when the green glow tells us that we are in perfect tune. And then we will find that we bring love and life and laughter to those around us. That getting back to normal life again may not feel so threatening. Indeed, that as we've been supporting others throughout all of this, new friendships, new insights would have been given to help us on our life's journey. Then we shall rejoice in our hope that through that journey to the cross, through taking up our cross, and through the resurrection, we too may come to that place where everything is in perfect harmony. Let us pray. Lord of love and life, we come into your presence, challenged by your word. Take up thy cross and follow me. to encourage and uphold one another and to live together in peace and love. We also recognise our needs and our human weakness and come to you now with our prayers and petitions. Praying for your church this morning, we give thanks for its leaders. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for world leaders, for our royal family, the heads of states, the Commonwealth, and for the United Nations. We also pray for our national and community leaders and those in public office dealing with the difficult situations, especially those involved with the serious problems associated with the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the ill, the lonely and the distressed, especially those tormented by fear arising from the global pandemic. We pray for healing and wholeness in their lives. And we pray for ourselves. Help us to bring life and love, joy and hope to those who live in despair. We also bring before your throne those who have asked for prayer. Janet, Ellen, Janet, Evelyn and Ted, Roger and Mary, Janice, Matthew, Tom, Betty, Nafat, Noel and Tom. I invite you to name in your hearts those for whom you pray today. Merciful God, we hold before you all who have died recently, including Chris Price. Be with the bereaved and all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, when we hear you call, help us to respond sacrificially, for you gave your all for us. Take up thy cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Saviour call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I prepare the table, I pray for you, this our online community, and for our church. I am minded that things are tough for so many people, in so many ways, which makes me even more grateful for your continued financial support of St. Andrews. Thank you. Let there be love, peace and hope shared among us.
pour upon the poverty of our love and weakness of our praise, the transforming fire of your presence. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, which is both mine and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went to battle on us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, call to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on the people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Christopher, St. Andrew, and all the saints, 
may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By your Lord, with him, let him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory and yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Father, as we participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is the love of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I grow, where your love and footsteps show. also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. 